growing up, uh, my uh, financial and markets literacy was basically at zero. Um, and I was very much in the same, in kind of an anti-capitalist camp, uh, which I like fall, f- fell victim to like the thinking of just like wealth inequality is like the bane of, bane of the existence, like, you know, down with the, the bourgeoisie, this kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> and, but like also at the same time, like the, the wealth inequality is like a huge drag on vibes. Like it doesn't really matter that we're living in some of the best times uh, in human history ever where like in people in poverty in America still can watch some of the best entertainment on Netflix that we've ever had. But that doesn't really matter right. when like you right. can kind of look over the fence at your like neighbor with a Ferrari or like, you know, billionaires tweeting on on Twitter about their like, shenanigans because like the gap between the rich and the poor will always still make people feel bad. Um, how, how would you say the variable of wealth inequality is impacting the whole the whole structure of the economic kingdom that you've illustrated? Oh, it's huge. Have you heard of the Las Vegas tunnels? No, I haven't. Okay, so there's um, a group of homeless people that'll live underneath Caesar's Palace. There's a very good documentary on it. But like, it's kind of interesting because you have these people like living in a tunnel um, because the water is cleaner. Uh, You know, you can plug into Caesar's pretty easy. Uh, And above them is like billionaires just walking around and gambling and like all this opulence. And I think that's like a, a it's not even a metaphor. It's like the economy, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like these, you know, you have people living in tunnels and above them is, a, you know, a, billion, a billionaire's footprint. And I, I would say like wealth inequality is a huge part of it. There is a statistic that talks about like the top 400 people in the U.S. They used to be 2% of U.S. GDP and now they're like 17%. So we have seen a lot of wealth concentration at the top. Um, and like, there's all sorts of tax policies in place too. like the inheritance tax that we have basically does not exist. So if you inherit money from your rich boomer parent, like you're solid. And this is creating a really, in- John Byrne Murdoch wrote about it in the financial times, like this really crazy bifurcation. Um, uh, this is not even on the level of wealth inequality. It's just like between generations, like there's going to be a cohort of millennials who are inheriting a home from their boomers from their boomer parents and then a cohort of millennials who aren't. And so that's going to sort of create even more stratification between these two groups and create even more wealth inequality. And like, there's really like, what are you going to say about that beyond just like tax people more? Um, but I, I think that wealth inequality is, is a massive problem. And it's so sad. Like it, I, I love the United States and I love living here, but it's such a bummer because we have so much wealth, but like not a lot of prosperity. Um, you know, upward mobility, Stephanie Stancheva, researcher at Harvard, has documented upward mobility has declined. Um, it's it's harder to get to where you would want to go just because of the concentration of wealth amongst the top. Um, and, you know, there's all sorts of political incentives to take away benefits for the bottom, um, even though it's kind of like we probably should help these people like they need help. Um, it's tough. Yeah. Is this uh, kind of like a drag, would you say, on uh, the economy in general? Or is just this sort of like a, a distribution type of um, like problem set? Or is like, I guess, you know, some folks that we've talked to feel very strongly like um, wealth inequality like turns into uh, social political problems. This is kind of like a, a Ray Dalio uh, type of uh, concept. It's just basically, it just spills over into turmoil, uh, you know, like revolution, this type this type of thing, which um, call, like creates kind of a negative sum uh, type of uh, gain, uh, game. And this is how it affects society overall. But like, what, what do you see as the, the effect of wealth inequality to the economic kingdom? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think it is a huge drag, uh, both economically and, uh, you know, social culturally. Um, it's a there's an Einstein quote that talks about it, I can't do it justice because I can't remember the whole thing. But essentially, it's this idea of like how many kids are stuck in cornfields, not having access to the education that he had. Like how many geniuses do we have stuck in the middle of nowhere because they couldn't get out? And I think that's really true. And like the Internet helps with all that. But like wealth inequality traps so much intelligence and it traps so much brilliance because people are just stuck. And I I think that's so, so sad. And it's obviously a drag on the economy because like if we had a better ladder out of poverty for people, who knows what we could accomplish, right? Um, And I I think it's always been hard to get out of poverty, obviously, but I think now it's, it's difficult. 
it's just like um, things are so expensive. Student loans are very high unless you get a certain amount of scholarships. Um, and the, I think that people maybe are not willing to take on as much risk as they used to be able to. Um, there's sort of like the decline of the internal locus of control and a focus on the external locus of control, like pushing blame to everything outside rather than knowing on the inside that you can take certain actions. Um, and I, I think that's kind of the tough part is, yeah, like we have so many people that need help um, and how do you help them? To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and it's completely free. Just click below to sign up.